Welcome back to 101 Sports. Join me now are 101 rookies Melissa Connor and Ryan Ballack discuss some of the most pointless things in sports. Melissa, I'm going to start with you. What do you think is the most pointless rule in all of sports? I think the rule of excessive celebration is the most just pointless rule in all of just football because I agree, I agree. They score a touchdown, they can't like get excited about it. Like like last year in the Kansas State Syracuse game, the guy scores a touchdown and salutes to the crowd and gets a 15-yard penalty for that and they couldn't even get a two-point conversion because of that to like possibly win them to the game. And all because of just he got a little excited that he did good for his team. <laughs> and also in the NFL, like with Chad Johnson and Steve Smith, used to do all these great celebrations that people love to see, and they would wait for them to score touchdowns and these great celebrations. But I think I have a rule that can one-up your rule, and that would be in, in golf that you cannot take a practice swing in the sand. Dustin Johnson in the 2010 U.S. Open took a practice swing in what he thought was the rough, but really it was the sand, and it took a one, he was forced to have a one-stroke penalty. So he lost the tournament by one in the end, all because of that. And the fact that you can't take a practice swing and hit the sand is just ridiculous. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous, but... But this can cost you an entire tournament. So could the this. The game could, this but could not also necessarily. Cost you a game. This directly has an impact. I'm going to have to take with the silliest rules. Got to go with Ryan. I mean, how I mean, grass, sand, who cares? Exactly. We're going to go down to the most meaningless award in sports. Ryan, what do you think? It's not a huge award, but on M uh, the MLB usually has a fan moment of the year mm -hmm. where they... Um, have like the most ridiculous fan, like one girl, uh, each row hit a line drive to right field and it was foul, and she got the ball and started freaking out. She started texting all her friends, oh my god, Ichiro Suzuki just touched me, and it was just ridiculous. But the fact that they single out one person as the moment of the year, I think that they should have multiple and just have a whole great video of it. I don't think that one person should win that and specifically be named fan of the year. It's All just right, I have an even more obscure award for you. It's called the Francis Palmery Naismith Award. The what? Yeah, you never heard <laughs> exactly. of it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is awarded to NCAA basketball, and it's for a person that is under, like shorter than average, under six foot is the specifications, that still excels on the court. So it's like if Kurt played basketball, like you're short and you're still good, good job. I mean, I don't see the point. Short people need love too, though. Yeah, I so, guess so, but I feel like it's a pretty pointless award. That gives award. me hope because I am, <laughs> if I was actually good at basketball, I could probably win this award since I'm like a midget. Yeah, exactly. It works perfectly. It works for you. I mean. <laughs> well, all right, guys. Well, what is the most irrelevant form of fan entertainment at sporting events? I'm going to have to go with the halftime competitions. What? Because oh. I don't care if Joe can throw a football through that hole. Like, it's not going to, like, pump me up for the game. I don't think it's that entertaining. But the I thing mean, with halftime competitions is there's so many sponsorships involved in the halftime competitions mm -hmm. that they make so much money off those. And who doesn't like seeing the mascots from the state playing each other in like a football game or a hockey game? I love that. The most irrelevant entertainment in sports is hockey and baseball cheerleaders. Ba cheerleaders <laughs> are for NBA and the NFL, and they are for looking at and I guess cheering and they don't make very much money. For hockey, they stand nowhere near the ice. For baseball, they stand on top of the dugout and pass out free shirts. They can't even stand there during the middle of the game. It is beyond irrelevant and I they mean, should be eliminated. I mean, have been a part of sports for like Not a really hockey long and baseball, time. football but, and basketball maybe. And who, football, now they have cheerleaders in the freezing cold. So they're wearing like winter coats well, to go out and cheer, which is ridiculous. <laughs> all right, all right. Wow. Just can't top it. There's no way. I don't. I don't know how you don't like cheerleaders. I love so cheerleaders, but win by default, oh, this, it's just for hockey and baseball. I'm afraid they don't belong. Out of time they do for not this belong. One on one webcast. You're crazy. For Matt Curry, Bill o Billy O'Riordan, Kurt Lestan, Melissa Connor, Ryan Valick, and everyone here at One on One Sports. I'm Tom Waterman, and thanks for watching. As always, whose side are you on?